Hi and welcome to this video tutorial on how to set up a render in V-Ray for Rhino. Um, for this tutorial I've made a simple scene just consisting of a courtyard here and in the centre of the courtyard we have this tree which I've just downloaded online and we have a window looking out onto the tree and I've got a kind of named view I've made of this which we're going to be testing and rendering out. Now to start to set up this render for adding materials and lighting we're going to start by just opening up the V-Ray Asset Editor file here which is just symboled by this V and we're going to go to the settings option and we're just going to start by just clicking on the V-Ray Interactive if you can't see that if you click on the little drop down arrow below you can see a teapot which is a kind of general V-Ray render which will just kind of render out an image set at whatever resolution you set the image at. The interactive renderer will set it up so it will set up a rendering window which you can then also adjust things in the model while the image is rendering. So if I click on the interactive renderer which is the teapot the little hand it will just open up a preview of my render. Now because I'm in this view it's giving me a preview there I'm going to just stop that. Let's make sure I'm in my window view and we get a kind of preview of our render and you can see because it's interactive I can move the tree around if I wanted to see where that moves. Now, now what you'll see is that my tree model has some textures on because I downloaded it with textures already on but the rest of my model is completely white and we also have this kind of generic white light in our scene. Now if I go to my settings, that white light is controlled by this environment tab here. Um, in the asset editor you can also click on this arrow on the right hand side to bring up more options and more settings in there that you can use. So I usually keep that open whenever I'm working in V-Ray. Now to play around with that environment light, it might be that you might not want any environment light at all and you want to start with a completely pitch black scene. So if you open up that environment, we can actually turn that background light on and off just by ticking this tick box next to the background. And if I turn it off, the scene goes completely black because I have no light set up in there. So let's tick that on for now. Now, the first thing you want to do when you're setting up a render is setting up the lighting in the scene. So what we'll do is we'll stop that for now. And I'm just going to set up a simple sunlight. Um, I'm going to go into a bit more detail in another video on different types of lighting in V-Ray. But for a simple scene setup, all you really need is a sunlight and an environment light. So to set up the sun, we're not going to be using Rhino's built-in sun, we're going to be using V-Ray Sun, which is a slightly different tool, but it looks very similar. Um, it's found just in the light options here. If you scroll along, we've got different types of light here. And we also have the sun creation tool there. So if I just click on the sun creation, we go on. I'm going to put it on manual controls because I just find it easy to work with. We're going to set the height, and this is much like if you've set the sun in Rhino before, it's exactly the same principle. Let's go like that. Hit OK. And the one thing you need to remember with the V-Ray sun is you have to place it in the scene. So it says point of sun, and then we'll just click anywhere. And it doesn't matter where you put the sun. It can be anywhere in the scene. It just has to be placed in. And you'll see it's now come up as this little arrow object there. Now let's take our view again and we'll re-render it out and have a look and see how that's changed. So now you see it's a lot brighter. We've got that sun in place and it's now kind of bleached out the image of light. If I turn off the background light, we'll still get our sun because we've got the sun and the background working together. So I'm going to keep that on and what you want to do now is obviously we need to play around the exposure to make sure we can visibly see our image. So to do that, if you go to the bottom left hand corner of your render frame here, we open up something called the color controls. And we'll just open up this tab on the right. We want to kind of open up this exposure control here and it might be closed by default. You can just click on the arrow on the side to open it. If we click the tick box there, we now can be in control of the exposure of our image. So I'm going to start by just taking this highlight burn down to about 50%. And that will just take down that kind of strong white light on there. And then we're just going to take the exposure and we're just going to scale it back until we've got a nice balance in our image. So I think somewhere like that. And you can pull the highlight back up if you want, a bit brighter. Somewhere there. And there you go, very simple. Just kind of brought the image back down. 
And once you've done that, you can close that box out and that will kind of permanently be applied to any image you render from this point on in this scene. If you open up a new file, you might need to set it up again, but in this particular scene, that exposure setting will be corrected to that. So that's my kind of general lighting setup and then you can go back and tweak the sun if you want to as well. Um, but we're going to just keep it at that point for now. And I'll go, like I said, I'll go into lighting in a bit more detail in another video. The next point is you want to have a look at your render output. Now I'm using my interactive renderer here, which will kind of lock in the output to quite a low size to help us use it while we're working. But if you want to then render out your final image, you'll have to go to render output and we can set the kind of image height and width in this place. And you can also set the aspect ratio. I'm keeping mine as a square. For now I'm on 700 by 700 and that refers to the number of pixels in the image. So if you wanted it to be a quite a high quality render you might go for something like 3000 or 4000 pixels. That could potentially be kind of blown up to an A1 size if you wanted to print it. Um, always kind of think of it in relation to maybe a DSLR camera. A high quality camera might take a kind of 4000 pixel size image. Um, also, if you know you're going to be displaying on a screen, most screens are only really HD size, which is kind of just over 1,000, 1,500 pixels. So probably don't need to go higher than that. 2,000 is quite a good number if you're not super sure. Um, just bear in mind that the higher the number of pixels, the longer it will take to render. So at the moment, I'm on 700, and we can zoom into about there before it gets pixelized. But if I put it up to, let's say, 3,000, by 3,000, and I'm going to hit, instead of interactive, let's hit the main render this time. You'll see this will kind of lock out a lot of the features and we won't be able to sort of change the way the image is looking while it's rendering. Um, and it will be a lot slower now because now we've upped the number of pixels, the render time will take a lot longer. So build it up and start rendering the image. Now you'll see I can zoom in a lot more than I could on my 700 pixel image. So you've got a kind of lot more quality, a lot more detail in there as we're rendering but it will take a lot longer. Um, if you're kind of unsure of how long to leave it for, and I usually keep my rendering on progressive here, the way it works is it will just start with a kind of pixelated image and it will get higher and higher quality each time. Um, the way this works is you can kind of see on the image here that it renders from the center outwards. And so as we move up, and you can kind of see it moving up there, that it's kind of going through what are called passes. And it will start from the center, move out to the edges, and that will equal one pass. And the more passes it does, the higher and the sharper the quality of the image will get. The less noise you'll get, um, the kind of finer detail you'll get on these edges. And the number of passes can be seen at the bottom of the render frame here. So currently we're on pass zero, and we'll just wait for it to get to pass one. So if you wanted a kind of a relatively really sharp kind of image, I'd definitely go for sort of a hundred passes. Um, obviously, this is taking quite a long time, three thousand pixels. So it might be that you'd have to leave it overnight to get it to hit that number. Um, you could probably work with kind of 40 to 50 passes if needs be, but the sharper you want the image, the less noise you want in it, the higher the number of the passes you're going to have to wait for. So I'm not going to leave this kind of rendering for too long, um, so I'm going to stop that there. And then whenever you want to stop with this, you can always just hit the stop button and it will just stop the rendering and finish it. So let's say we're happy, we've kind of rendered it out, we've stopped it. To save the image out, all you have to do is click on this Save Current Channel at the top here, and it will just ask you to save that, and I'll save it just as a JPEG image in here. And that's it. That's basically simple render setup in V-Ray, setting up a light, setting up your scene, adjusting the exposure, and then saving the image out. For more detail on material creation and other forms of, kind of rendering within V-Ray, have a look at my other videos that talk about material creation, lighting setup and clipping planes as well.